Hi everyone, I'm Ed, and today I want to show you a super cool, easy and low-cost project. With less than $2 and a 3D printer, you can make a fantastic homemade humidifier, and the link to you to download the model for free is in the description below. But why would you want to make this project? I will give you three reasons. One, I already said at the beginning, it's cool, easy and low-cost. Moreover, it's a great way to pass the time and know more about science and electronics. 2. Depending on where you live or the time of the year, our humidifiers are very useful. All our we breathe has a certain amount of water vapor, which is the relative humidity of the air. If the air is too dry, it can cause irritation to your skin, eyes and even the lungs. By placing a humidifier near where you work, study or sleep, you make you feel much better. And 3. You will have a super cool gadget that, if you have some artistic aptitude, you can paint and, in my case, since I have no artistic talent at all, invite someone else to participate in the project and give a personal touch to it. You see, cool, low-cost, health, science, arts, all together in the same project. What more do you want? First, let's have a look at the heart of the project. This is a USB-C ultrasonic misty maker that I bought on AliExpress. Here in Italy, I pay around one and a half euros without considering shipping which can even be free depending where else you buy. It comes with a small board with all electronic components and a USB port, a piezoelectric transducer, which may already be connected on the board or if not, it is to connect. A stick to absorb the water that's made of something that like a synthetic cotton and a support for the stick, which will not be used in this project. To work, just connect the power to the USB and touch the wet stick on the transducer. Remember that it is the right side to work well. But Ed, how does this work? Interestingly, the word piezo originates from Greek piezin, which means push or squeeze. The piezoelectric crystal inside the transducer works like a linear electric motor, that is, it moves in line. When the crystal receives electricity, it vibrates very fast and throw micro droplets of water in the air, which they are very small evaporate immediately. And how fast it vibrates? As the name suggests, with ultrasonic speed, that's why we can't hear the vibration, because it's beyond the sound we can hear. To give an idea, the frequencies we can hear are between 2 and 20 kHz, which means something between 2000 and 20,000 vibrations per second. I am not sure the precise frequency of this ultrasonic device, but some models work at 108 kHz, which is more than 100,000 vibrations per second, and some models work at 2.4 MHz, which is more than 2 million vibrations per second. Anyway, both cases are ultrasonic enough for anyone can hear. Also, this ultrasonic humidifier is super energy efficient. It uses much less energy than it would to take to heat the water to the point to generate the same amount of steam. Another positive point is that when the water evaporates, it removes heat from the environment. So, in addition to generate humidity, also reduces the temperature near the humidifier, which makes ideal for dry and hot weather, like here in South Italy in summer. For this project, you also need a 3D printer and filament in the color you prefer. But Ed, I don't have a 3D printer. No problem, you can ask a friend with a 3D printer. After all, it is not that a friend with a 3D printer is for, I don't know what else. But Ed, I don't have a friend with a 3D printer. Okay, first, you may need more friends. Second, that's not a deal breaker at all. You can look around and I'm sure you will find someone near you offering 3D printing services. It usually doesn't cost much and it's quick. Plus, you will be helping the local economy. Okay, let's show the project. Here is my first prototype with the place to put the board, the cotton stick and the transducer on the top. Um, after some time I realized maybe it's not a good idea to have the electronic part with the part with water, so I decided to make a wall separating both parts. And yeah, that's my second print with the wall separating both sides. Uh, but I made some mistakes here and the small board stopped to fit, 
So I print this third version here and that version here was good enough to send to my wife to make her magic on the brush. Okay, that is the version I printed after the ZBrush work. And I don't know if you can see here, I was out of white filament, but yeah, it's possible to see in black, yes? Yeah, that's still nice. Okay, so what I learned here is I made this connection, walls, to put the both halves together, and I start with the round shape, as you can see here. But the top of the round shape was kind of droopy, because I didn't put supports here before printing, and maybe because I hate to remove the supports after the printing. So I made a slight change, and I came with that version here. Instead of uh, circles, I used triangles. That way I don't need supports, at least not in that part here. And it's super easy to join them together, as you can see, and you have the Godzilla shape now. Also, if you are attentive to details, you may have noticed this internal tube here connecting the board to the transducer. And why did I do that? On the board, we can notice that the manufacturer was kind enough to provide a power output, where we can see the positive and the negative. However, there is no voltage indication here. Well, because it's a USB powered device, I suspect that it will be 5 volts, which is the standard voltage for the USB cable. Let's measure. We can use this to install additional light. I want something economic, like LED, for example. The problem here is the LED uses 3 volts, and here I have 5 volts. Hmm, how do we fix that? Easy, we put a resistor to lower this voltage, and in this case a 100 or 200 ohms resistor will work well. So, that part is read, now it's just assemble the humidifier. Assembling is super easy. If you choose not to install the LED light, it's just fit the board and the transducer, close, place the tube that transports the water, place over the water and connect the USB. I also included a plate 3D model for you to print where the water will not reach the USB connector. It's never a good idea to mix water and electronics. Assembling the version with the light is also easy, but for that part you will need a 100 or 200 ohms resistor, a 20 million pairs LED light, you can choose the color you like more, a soldering iron, solder and two pieces of electrical wire. The only additional thing you need to do is solder the resistor between the LED and the board power output. It can be either positive or negative. I prefer to solder the wires to the LED first, taking care that the positive does not touch the negative. Remember that in the LED, the positive pole has rounded part on the side and the negative is flat, or the positive is the longest wire and the negative is the shortest. Solder the resistor directly the negative in the board. Pass the wires through the tube, Now, solder the wire from the LED positive to the positive to the board and the negative wire to the resistor. Just wait a minute. Before showing the final result, I would like to remind you to slap that like button, share and especially subscribe here to my channel. And this is the finished version already fantastically painted by my wife, working and improving the art quality here in my studio. I hope you enjoyed doing this project with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.